Welcome to the second installment of Coffee and Curiosity, Sparking Interest in LGBTQ History. During the month of October, we celebrate LGBTQ History Month, and because of the lack of inclusion in our education system, LGBTQ history is important for us as queer individuals and allies to step up and tell the stories before they are effectively written out of history. These videos are meant to spark your curiosity and give you a base for learning more about the topic. This morning, we will be talking about Albert Cassier, a TransUnion Army soldier. Albert Cassier was born in Cloggerhead, Ireland on December 25, 1843, to Sally and Patrick Hodger. Albert was born a female, but adopted the identity of Albert Cassier in order to live independently. Albert's mother, Sally, is known to have died prior to 1862, by which time her child had traveled as a stowaway to Belvedere, Illinois, and had begun working as a farmhand to a man named Avery. Little is known about Albert's immigration to the United States. He had always been an invasive man about his early life, and when interviewed about it as an elderly man, he was disoriented and suffered from Alzheimer's. So little is known about his early life. In July 1862, Cashier first enlisted after President Lincoln's call for soldiers. Many Belvedere boys had been at the Battle of Shiloh as members of the 15th Illinois, Re 15th Illinois Volunteers, where the Union had suffered heavy losses. The need for soldiers grew, so Cashier took the train along with other boys from Belvedere to Rockford, in order to enlist in an answer to the call for more soldiers. On August 6, 1862, the 18-year-old enlisted in the 95th Illinois Infantry for a three-year term. He was assigned to Company G. Cashier listed, was listed in the company catalog as 19 years old upon enlistment and small in stature. At 5'3", he was the shortest soldier in the division, but also one of the most spirited. Cashier learned how to be a volunteer infantryman of the 19th, or I'm sorry, of the 95th Regiment at Camp Fuller. After being shipped out by steamers and rail to Confederate strongholds in Columbus, Kentucky, and Jackson, Tennessee, the 95th was ordered to Grand Junction, where it became part of the Army of the Tennessee under General Ulysses S. Grant. The regiment fought in approximately 40 battles including the siege at Vicksburg. During this campaign, Cashier was captured while performing reconnaissance, but managed to escape and return to the regiment. After the Battle of Vicksburg, in June 1863, Cashier contracted chronic diarrhea and entered a medical military hospital. He was able to recover without being outed. In the spring of 1864, the regiment was also present at the Red River Campaign under General Nathaniel Banks, and in June 1864 at the Battle of Bryce's Crossroads in Guntown, Mississippi, where they suffered heavy casualties. Following a period of recuperate and regroup, following the buckle at Bryce in the 95th, now a seasoned and battle-hardened regiment, saw additional action in the winter of 1864 in the Franklin-Nashville campaign at the Battles of Spring Hill and Franklin, the defense of Nashville, and the pursuit of General Hood. During the war, the regiment traveled a total of about 9,000 9, miles. Other soldiers thought that Cashier was small and preferred to be alone, which were not uncommon characteristics for soldiers. Cashier fought with the regiment through the war until honorably discharged on August 17, 1865, when all the soldiers were mustered out. Cashier is one of the 250 female at-birth soldiers who we know have enlisted to fight in the war, and the only one to maintain his male identity undiscovered and able to collect an army pension. By the time his service to the army had concluded, Cashier had traveled 10,000 miles and fought in 40 ba different battles and skirmishes. His hero status was achieved when he placed himself in harm's way to hoist a Union flag over land held by Confederate soldiers only moments before. His friends were stunned by his courage, adding, Cashier was never one to run from a fight.
cashier returned to Belvedere, Illinois after the war for a time. He worked for Samuel Pepper. In 1869, he settled in Sunimin, Illinois, where he worked as a farmhand as well as performing odd jobs around the town. He can be found in the town payroll records. Cashier lived with employer Joshua Chesbro and his family in exchange for work and had also slept for a time in the courting hardware store in exchange for labor. In 1885, the Chesbro family had a small house built for Cashier. For over 40 years, Cashier lived in Sunamine and was a church janitor, cemetery worker, and street lamp lighter. Cashier began receiving his veterans' pensions payments in 1907. In later years, Cashier's neighbors and friends, the Lannan family, discovered his sex when he fell ill. The Lannans kept his secret private. In 1911, Cashier was working for State Senator Ira Lish and was hit by the senator's car, resulting in a broken leg. A physician found out about the patient's sex in the hospital, but did not disclose the information. No longer able to work, the senator helped Cashier move to the Soldiers and Sailors' home in Quincy, Illinois. On May 5, 1911, during this time, many friends and fellow soldiers from the 95th Regiment visited. Cashier lived there until an obvious deterioration of mind began to take place and was moved to the West, well, I'm sorry, the Watertown State Hospital for the Insane in March 1914. Attendants at the Watertown State Hospital discovered Cashier's sex, at which point the patient was made to wear women's clothing again after more than 50 years identifying as a man. In 1914, he was investigated for fraud by the Veterans Pension Board. Former comrades confirmed that Cashier was in fact the person who had fought in the Civil War, and the board decided in, 19, in February of 1915 that payment should continue for life. Albert Cashier died 105 years ago today, on October 10, 1915. He was buried with full military honors in uniform and was given an official Grand Army of the Republic funerary service. It took W.J. Singleton, the executor of Cashier's state, estate, nine years to track Cashier's identity back to their dead name. None of the would-be heirs provide, I'm sorry, none of the would-be heirs proved convincing, and this estate of approximately $282 was deposited into the Adams County, Illinois treasurer, treasury. Inscribed on the original tombstone was Albert D.J. Cashier, Company G, 95th Illinois Infantry. In the 1970s, a second tombstone that included his dead name was placed near the original, original marker at Sunny Slope Cemetery in Sunamine, Illinois. Cashier is listed on the internal wall of the Illinois Memorial at Vicksburg National Military Park. Cashier's amazing story has inspired a number of works, including... The Civility of Albert Cashier, a musical, a biography, also no, a biography entitled, also known as Albert D.J. Cashier, The Ginny Hodger Story, by veteran Lon P. Dawson. He inspired a novel, My Last Skirt, by Linda Durant, and Nine Irish Lives, a collection of essays in which Cashier's biography was written, by Jill McDonoghue. He also inspired a children's book, The Fighting Infantryman, by Rob Sanders, illustrated by Nabi H. Ali. In every war America has been in, there are evidence of trans individuals fighting for their country. No one should have to hide their sexual, sexual or gender identity to serve their country. The story of Albert Cashier is a reminder to us all that our history is far more complex than our ancestors have led on. And that, heroism, and that heroism isn't defined by gender. Thank you for joining us for Coffee and Curiosity. We hope the story of Albert D.J. Cashier sparked your interest. If you would like to help support the work Project Q&A does, please visit our website to learn more about our organization at www.projectqna.org. Here you can also make a tax-deductible donation. Project Q&A raises awareness for the LGBTQ community living in rural America through education, empowerment, and visibility. We hope you enjoyed this morning's talk and have a great afternoon.